All right, guys, Ian just picked up this brand new 2019 Can-Am Maverick X3 X RC Turbo R. And it's pretty sweet. This is our walk around and first impressions. So we can see the standard Maverick body style frame. Complete chassis setup's the same as all the X3 line. Except that they've got a few rock crawling slash trail upgrades that you don't find on other vehicles in this series. Better time to test this thing, right? <laughs> it's a little chilly out. Yeah. So, Ian, coming from the YXZ, what kind of prompted you to go this direction? Well, I wanted a turbo for sure. Uh, we ride sand so much, I wanted the extra power. And, you know, part of it too is, you know, I've, I've had the YXZ since uh, uh, May of 2017. Uh, we put it in SEMA, put about 3,500 miles on it. Uh, this, this, car in particular has always fascinated me and I uh, wanted to do a build around it and it was just time you know yep. the YXZ uh, got rid of the YXZ the YXZ was functioning flawlessly uh, had a, had an amazing time on the car but you know as I, I just I wanted to jump into a turbo uh, have something a little bit quicker especially for sand and uh, for the money that I was looking to put in the YXZ to make it really sand competitive it, it just it was an easy trade-off yeah and, uh, I got a great price on the Yamaha wound up jumping into this thing we have about 20 miles on it and uh i i break i've been breaking it in the same way i broke in the yxz uh ginger on it a little bit kind of get it uh, basically heat cycles yeah uh, we've thrown a little power at it though it definitely a noticeable difference in power between stock yxz mine mine was flashed but uh this thing's got a lot more scoot to it no doubt yeah about it. so this unit comes with 172 horsepower stock from the factory I remember right comes with the smart lock front diff Fox 2.5s in the front with 22 inches of travel comes on 30 inch max Liberty tires on 14 inch bead locks those are actual bead locks right they are. and uh, out back we have Fox 3.0s which a lot of vendors have started getting away from just because of the cost of them but uh, having the 3.0s makes a world of difference when you're talking about hard landings especially if you're in the dunes or jumping off of stuff all the time you'll see that the front and rear come with sway bars which to me is interesting for an RC edition the front sway bar is an itty bitty little guy right in there so I would imagine some uh, quick disconnects might be in your future for those. I don't know that I'm going to rock crawl this thing too much, though. You know, it's just I think that this is a great car for sand. You got a winch. Uh, if you're out playing by yourself, you got some recovery capability. Plus, it's just it's super tough. I, I think it's going to be a great car for where we ride, northern Idaho, uh, Oregon coast, yep. Montana, places like that. So it comes standard with. Uh, thirty or is it thirty five hundred or forty five hundred pound winch? I'll have to look it up. Yeah, front tow hook, front nose bumper to help protect the grill a little bit. As the uh, radiator's right behind there, it's not too far back behind there. Interesting, they come up with these little reflector deals on the bumpers. Uh, yeah. Other vendors just do stickers on the side. It had a uh, nice rock chip in the bumper here, so they knocked off about $2,000 off the front. <laughs> Look for those chips, man. Those will save you in the long run. So, as far as the front end goes, you got a booted rack and pinion. You got your smart front diff, like I said. Let's see if we can sneak in there a little bit. That'll be the cleanest that front diff ever looks. Come standard with HWM A-arm guards. Comes uh, with beefy reinforced tie rod ends. Those are actually, for scale, fairly beefy. My finger makes it look small, but it's actually fairly big. 
And something I like about the Can-Am stuff is they use boxed framing around the vehicle in various areas, which is nice. Instead of just flat sheet metal. Up front you come with the uh, tree intrusion bars, which is a nice touch. Gives it a little more aggressive look. You got the Can-Am shock towers. I'm assuming those will probably eventually someday get some modifications as well. Full doors. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, every manufacturer, full doors. And we'll wait to get inside there in a second. So the frame has a nice gusset. Comes with a factory um, metal roof with quick remove pins, which I thought was a nice touch. Alloy, actually. Yeah. Coming around back, you can see that the air intake is right behind the driver. That's a point of contention between various groups and factions. I love that it comes with the liberties too. You touched on it earlier, but this is my favorite tire. I ran them on, the, on my YXE. It's so cold I can barely talk, sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I ran the liberties. Uh, I want to say I had probably about a thousand miles on a set of liberties uh, on my Yamaha. And they performed so well. Really yeah, happy they... with how they wore. Really happy with how they performed. They have uh, a really great tread pattern in them. Yeah, not the greatest for mud, but... Uh, Holding on to a line that uh, I, I really, I really think the world of. Plus, they're light. And they have some nice, grippy sidewalls as well. <coughs> Trailing arms come standard with the uh, WHM guards as well. You come with your tree kickers, low profile tree kickers, spring guards. Mentioned the air intake in the back comes down from the driver's side there. And what's interesting is their air box and air filter is right back here. And they have a drain there, which is important to understand that that's there because if you let, if you go any deeper than this, you're gonna be letting water into your intake. So it's definitely not a, a deep mud vehicle without some modifications. So you got your clutch air intake and exhaust, all fairly accessible with that new low profile style that they went through a couple years ago instead of bulging out which is nice axles are nice and thick hubs are fairly standard pardon the sniffles it's pretty cold out here coming back to the rear again you got some actual physical reflectors it's a standard exhaust on the can-am comes with a spark arrestor at the back instead of in, in line with a muffler like most of the units do. Comes with your six radius rods and a standard tow package on the plate which is nice. If you've ever had to recover a vehicle or tie it down with any extra mount points of that you always know that's nice. So the rear hubs fairly boxed in, fairly stout. If you've ever dealt with a Can-Am you know those, those are pretty stout. Coming back to the 172 horsepower Rotax engine, triple cylinder in line, standard exhaust, caddy, that turbo I believe is right back up in there, I don't know if you can see that, again sway bar, you got your regulator, something I've liked about the Rotax stuff is that they're fairly well robust in their bracing and their support system. You never really worry about it coming loose or rotating itself to death, rattling itself to death. All in all, the X3 has a pretty good looking back end if you're coming from a YXZ like Ian. That's a pretty familiar look. I'm all about the back end. <laughs> One thing I think is interesting is that they've chosen to top mount these reservoirs from the factory instead of side mount, which gives you more storage room, but also exposes it a little bit more. Yeah, but it looks sick. <laughs> it does look, make it look a little, little more muscly, yeah. Yeah, a little more aggressive. All right, let's take a, let's take a look in the driver's seat, huh? Something I didn't mention, it comes with the standard signature lights up front. Again, standard full doors. Every manufacturer should be doing this. I'm not a big fan of the pull loop system, but it seems to work. So 
So it comes standard with two bolstered seats with adjustable retractable harnesses, which is nice. All the top tier machines are starting to do that. You can see the roller system on this unit uh, is fairly robust. You're not gonna have any problems moving that forward or backwards any day. Yeah, I would argue driver position on this for a taller driver, you're gonna be hard pressed to find a machine that's as comfortable. It's a really nice machine. The, uh, the basic uh, lay down some miles in, I'm really comfortable in the car. And, yeah. You know, and that's one thing I really like about the YXE too, it's super comfortable, so there's no trade off here. It, uh, and for the record, Ian around. and I are both 6'2 plus, so yeah. uh, we're fairly tall individuals and having a good root cabin space is a good thing for us, so. Up front you have a place for your speakers, which a lot of guys do. You have your rocker switch mounts on the left side, which on this coming with standard with the winch. You have your winch button, you have your lights, you have a space for something else. Standard Can-Am steering wheel, which is actually a fairly good steering wheel. Um, it's a little bit oblong in the hand, but it's, it's pretty good. Instrument cluster. If I, if I have one complaint about the car, that's it. It's it's, it's the steering wheel. You yeah. Know, I don't like I don't like how it's positioned. It, like pretty much at all. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan of the steering wheel. Huh. But uh, it's, it's pretty it's, grippy. Oh, yeah, it is grippy. I, I can get over it. It's, it's got some in, some thumb. Yeah. yeah, it's it's nothing special any in any way, but it's right. definitely um, it's good for what OEM would be. Gauge cluster. Moves with the uh, steering wheel. You got your sport modes. You got your key fobs, your start stop button, four wheel, DPS, your trail riding button. So you can select uh, more of a less aggressive power uh, band or more aggressive for the trail. Something nice on the RC series. Got your grab handle, your gated shifter, which is uh, not—I don't think it's a true gate, but it's—it's it's, uh, somewhat gated. You got your cup holders. Interesting that they have spots for three more switches there. And again, with the seats, and then you have your front dash area, which I think this is a storage compartment, right? There we go. Nice little glove box. Not real deep or anything, but it's definitely better than. No storage. Yeah, you can put your sunglasses in there, that's all you need. Goggles, gloves, whatever. Come standard with rear view mirror, which on the can I thought was unique because they put a um they put a, a mirror mount on their cage. So if you take the roof off and the mirror off and everything, you still have this little ledge sitting there, which is kind of funky. But well constructed, well built. You can see again the air intake there, and you got your intercooler for the turbo. And then right behind that panel there, you have easy access to some of the components of the engine, like the turbo and, and all that. So I was just talking to Ian a little bit ago about these cages. If you're upgrading these cages, the 19 still have the welded platform here. So you have to cut and grind those down. The 20s went to a bolted platform where you can just pull the whole cage off. So, I don't know, Ian, what's your first impressions? You've been on it for a little bit here, a couple uh, days. Yeah, so far so good. I, I, I like it. You know, I can't wait to see what it becomes over the next year, year or two. Uh, one of the first things I'm going to do to it is uh, uh, rugged radio. Uh, it'll go to the cage builder probably. I mean, the weather is garbage right now, but we got a little window where we can go ride. I'll uh, probably wait until maybe like January to have the cage built. We're not gonna put we're not gonna put a uh, uh, a cage on it from a cage builder. We're gonna have a a guy out of Hermiston, Oregon, build it, uh, custom fabricator, creatively, just like second to none. So I can't wait to see what he does with it. Um, so what do you think about the power band? Like coming from a gated from a paddle shifting car 
too, a CVT, what was your first impressions of that? Well, just noticeably quicker, you know. Uh, I'm taking it down the same lines I used to drive my YXZ on, and uh, I mean, there's certain corners I'm used to going into at 50, 55, and the YXZ, this thing will go into them as fast as you want because it has the, it has the, the legs to stretch. Yeah. You know, it, it is a, it, there, there's a big difference in power between a, a, you know, a flash or a stock YXZ compared to this thing, and that's the most noticeable thing. Uh, if I had to say the thing that shocked me most is I've been in X3s before, I've been in this car before, I've been in uh, 16 X3s all the way up to 19, and they have this feeling where, especially on the front end where they float a lot, and I don't feel that in this one as much as the other ones that I've driven. Like I'll throw it into a corner, it feels very, very stable. A lot of hookup, the front end, see, feel, it, the car just feels predictable. Yeah. You know, and, and, uh, uh, some of the X3s I've, I've driven kind of feel a little bit vague. There's none of that with this thing. And so you were talking about the YXZ being one of the most responsive steering vehicles in the industry. Yeah. How does this feel getting into the into the tight turns? To me, it's not there, but it's close. It's, yeah, it is one of those cars, like as soon as you let off, you lose traction. You, you power it through, it, it hooks, and it'll pull yourself, pull yourself through the uh, corner pretty good there. There's some stuff you can do to these things to get them to handle a little bit better. I don't know if I'm there yet. You know, I, I, I'm not... I'm not going to make any sort of suspension type upgrades to this thing until at least have maybe about 500 miles on it so I know where we want to go. With yeah, it. you're not even breaking in the exactly. valves until that. So, exactly. Well, she's a good looking car. I can't say there's anything ugly about her except for maybe the blue, but... I, I don't mind the blue. It, it, it matches the sky today pretty well. You know, working with full throttle battery, our colors are gray and red and black and orange and all that stuff, so it's going to be a little bit of a challenge <laughs> to kind of get it to, get, it, get it to have that company color look to it, but I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Well, I know over just with the quick the quick ride we had together, it, it definitely has the kick in the pants feeling to it. Um, <laughs> that 172 horsepower doesn't go to waste for sure. And, uh, you know, that's one thing that coming from other brands, me personally being more of a Polaris guy in the past, um, that uh, that power band is more um, linear, whereas it seems like it scoops up pretty fast. Starts starts tame, but takes off like a wildcat, you know, yeah, just kind of crazy. Get some momentum going, no, no doubt about it. Yeah. Well, what do you think? Why don't we, uh, Why don't we go have some take, coffee? <laughs> get warmed up and then take it out for a rip. So, something I just realized. Uh, there's a gas cap. That's, uh, that's an interesting place for it. This thing is fiddly beyond belief. I already pulled it out once. Uh, Get in there. There. There we go.